Welcome to the Monarch Watch program through Thousand Islands Environmental Center. This year we will be doing our Monarch Watch program on a virtual manner in which you will be able to participate individually using the tags that we have purchased and your own butterflies that you are raising. Just to review the monarch life cycle, the monarch starts from a female laying an egg on a species of milkweed. There are several different types of milkweed plants to choose from, but the most common is the common milkweed plant. The monarch egg is a tiny little yellow football shaped egg on the bottom side of the milkweed plant. That hatches into a very tiny caterpillar, which grows and grows and grows into five instars, which is the time between the shedding of the caterpillar's skin. For the fifth instar, the caterpillar hangs in a J formation, preparing itself to shed its skin and form the chrysalis on the outside of its body. As it's in the chrysalis, it transforms into a beautiful butterfly that will emerge after about two weeks. Once that butterfly emerges and its wings lengthen and flatten and dry, it's ready to be released. Once you have your butterfly ready to be released, this is where the Monarch Watch program comes into play. Monarch Watch is an organization that helps to monitor the migration of the monarch butterflies from the northern states to Mexico. The Monarch Watch organization sends a kit of materials for you to do your tagging. One of those materials is your data sheet. That's where we would record the code, the month, the day, the year, whether it's a male or female, whether it was reared in the wild or whether it was reared indoors, and the location from where it was released. It also includes an instructional sheet that helps you to know exactly where to place the tag on the butterfly. When you are looking at your butterfly, you wanna record whether it's a female or a male. The female has thicker veins in its wings and it lacks the pouch, the little black spot on the hind wings at the bottom of the butterfly. The tag is very small and it includes the Monarch Watch phone number, the email address, and the number of the tag that you are using. To place the tag in the correct spot on the butterfly, you'll want to find the discal cell on the hind wing or the bottom wing. It's a gloved shaped cell and you'll use a toothpick or a paper clip to very gently place the adhesive side of the tag on that discal cell. You will use your fingers to gently hold that tag in place for two to three seconds. And once you have released that tag, it is adhered to the wing. So I like to get the tags off and ready before I grab the butterfly. It makes it a lot easier if you're working with just yourself. If you have a person helping you out, they can prepare the tags while you're grabbing the butterfly, getting it ready to tag. In order to hold the butterfly most safely, you wanna gently grab both the fore wings and the hind wings together. This won't hurt the butterfly and it's the safest way to hold them. The next thing, so you wanna find on the hind wing, the cells that look kind of like a mitten. That's where your tag is going to go. So then actually tagging the monarch is as easy as taking your paper clip with the tag on it, slipping it into that region, and then holding the tag down for two to three seconds. That'll be enough for it to adhere to the wings and your butterfly is now tagged. Once you've applied your tag to the butterfly's wing, it's time to release your butterfly. 
So you'll want to continue to gently hold both the forewing and the hindwing as you move outdoors. Once you get outside, you'll want to find a flower to release the butterfly onto. There's a chance that the butterfly might just fly right out of your hand once you open the wings and allow it to be free. As a tradition in my world, when I release a butterfly and it's on its way to migrate, I like to say, good luck on your journey. In addition to monitoring the migration of the monarch butterflies, you can also work toward creating habitat for the monarchs to help them with either their nectarine foods for their migration or to help them with the host plant and planting some milkweed plants. Some of my favorites are the liatris as seen here. There are purple cone flowers and zinnias that butterflies love to drink the nectar from. And of course, there are all the different species of milkweed. Please enjoy a reading of a book that includes many of those species, The Monarch's Gift. The Monarch's Gift, A Journey Through the Life of a Monarch Butterfly by Stephanie Firestein. Paintings by Catherine Wedge. A pretty monarch butterfly floated through the sky, fluttering her dappled wings as clouds went drifting by. Looking for a place to rest, she dropped down to the ground, landing in a field of blooms without making a sound. Colors, colors everywhere. The flowers were aglow with red and orange and yellow too a beautiful rainbow. Searching for a certain flower, tasting every one, unrolling her proboscis, her special straw-like tongue. Following the spectrum of a rainbow's lovely light, she sipped an Indian paintbrush, its petals red and bright. Sensing with her feet that this flower was not right, she danced across the meadow through a flood of orange delight. The butterfly weed nectar was sweet and tasted right, but the honeybee upon the plant put up an awful fight. So she fled away from him to a happy yellow bunch of blooms with chocolate centers, a black-eyed Susan lunch. The monarch drank her fill and warmed up in the sun, but knew that in her heart, her work was still not done. She fluttered a bit farther and found a small white tip peeking out from lush green leaves from a turtle head she sipped. Too difficult to drink from that, she lifted up and flew to taste a lovely lupine, a spike of violet blue. Still searching for that certain flower, she fluttered once again and flapped her wings in joy to see her special friend. Adorned in pinkish purple blooms, the common milkweed glowed and welcomed Monarch's bright orange wings with a warm and soft hello. The Monarch rested there a while, happy for the break then sipped some sugary nectar once she was awake. And as the day began to dim, the breeze gave her a lift, but not before the monarch left a very special gift. A tiny yellow egg lay underneath a leaf, safe from rain and sunlight, a place of true relief. And in return, the plant gave her its own gift from the earth, a wealth of food, of healthy leaves, for the caterpillar's birth. 
And every day the baby ate and grew and grew and grew. It shed its skin for five instars until its growth was through. The fifth instar, it formed a J and sewed a silken thread to hang in total silence as a chrysalis instead. For two full weeks, bright green with gold, the chrysalis just hung, transforming everything inside until its time was done. And suddenly, one morning as the sun was just arising, the chrysalis split open, a new monarch was arriving. She pushed out of the chrysalis and hung there for a while as back and forth her wings would pump till they were full and dry. And as she left her friend that day, she turned to him to say, thank you for your precious gift and promptly flew away. The End